G'day guys, Blake here with another video and uh, I'm really excited to be back with another video. You've probably noticed over the last couple of months my uploading schedule has been a bit sparse and that's because I've been concentrating on refining and redeveloping my egg scattering uh, collection method. So if you are long term viewers of the channel you'll know that I'm keen on breeding a lot of egg scattering fish such as Danios and other Cyprinids. And as part of that process, I've incorporated 3D printing into my hobby to develop a method of collecting eggs from fish in the least uh, bothersome, the least stressful way possible. So over the last few months, while I haven't been uploading videos, I've been uh, developing ideas, drawing up heaps of different 3D models, printing them and testing them. And today's video, I think I've got something really exciting to show you and a method that can make it really easy for you to get your hands on one as well. So. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into the video and I'll show you my brand new method for harvesting eggs from egg scattering fish. Let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so the idea to come up with the stress-free way to collect eggs uh, is definitely one that I came up with with the help of DIY Mick on YouTube or Michael Kaur is his name. And, uh, he definitely needs to get a lot of the credit for sparking the thought in my mind. Before that, I was definitely just dealing with trays of marbles and everything else that uh, is the typical way to do it, but I just didn't really enjoy that process. And I found that after a short period of time, I'd just give up on trying to collect the eggs because it's just such a hassle. So I saw on Facebook, I think Mick um, shared a few different posts. He had a, a small aquarium divided off and it had a collection device uh, on the divider side with the moss on there so that they would lay the eggs and then they would fall through to the other side and there'd be a bunch of juveniles and newborn fry uh, on one side divided away from the parents, safe from being eaten. So I took that idea and ran with it and from that I didn't want to divide off part of an aquarium because I thought that would be difficult to take the fish from that side. So I came up with an idea to have a device similar for the collection front but then come out and then go up via an airlift into a collection container and that was the first idea that um, this collection device ran through. It was okay but it, there was a fair bit of DIY elements to it. I was more than happy to print this for people but for me it didn't really solve the problem because people still had to have a fair bit of DIY know-how to go and cut up a container, uh, create an overflow on it, make sure that it floated and then there's still just yeah a fair bit of assembly required. So. From that I tried to develop a more all-in-one approach and uh, I came up with this one next but it was actually probably the third or fourth revision by that point. This is the next device that I came up with here but again it wasn't really something that I could send out to people because on the back we have a piece of acrylic which is really really hard to come by in Australia, surprisingly difficult and it was hot glued, it was messy, it's something that I was happy to create at home by myself with a bit of time but in terms of sitting down and making you know 10 a week or 5 a week it definitely would be cumbersome and the cost just didn't really uh, outweigh the benefit because it was a big bulky item it requires a big box for shipping and all those sorts of things but um, the way that this one works is inside you have a similar sort of thing a sponge filter with an uplift and that goes out one side. Eggs are laid on this little platform here, it gets sucked through to the back and then there's a circular movement in there. This one worked really really well except for those items that it's big and bulky, it takes a long time to print, I have specialist things that I need to source and attach and also I didn't really enjoy the fish tanks that much. I mean there was beautiful fish behind this big black box but uh, it was often blocking majority of the view so I barely ever got to see the fish and then sometimes if I had a disease or something like that I caught it far too late so I didn't really think that this was a great option to sort of send out to people or to recommend so from that point I, I sat down and I thought you know we really have to come up with something better than that. So the next thing I came up with was version 4. It looks like this, it's more of a rectangle because I thought the larger area for them to lay the eggs on would mean that there'd be less tipping over the edge perhaps, more area to place moss on and just a more comfortable space that they can lay eggs. And the good thing about this design is I made it to fit one of these which is a threaded elbow. It fits directly in the hole, you screw it in like so. I'm not going to put it the whole way but screws in just like that so it's nice and neat and these elbows are something that I could provide to people if they wish to purchase one. As long as that I'd, I'd also submit a airline 
a tap-in and a section of PVC pipe so that anyone can have access to this. And the other brilliant thing about this is that if you take an ordinary hang-on breeder box, which I've been recommending for three years or more, and if you take off the bottom air sewn attachment like so, then this pipe here at the bottom exactly fits this piece of black pipe which I'm gonna supply with these boxes. It, it's a very tight fit, but it definitely squeezes on in there. And just like that, really, really simple to put together. So just like that, I was super stoked. I had an item that's a fairly easy print, something that I could assemble really, really simple. I'll just attach something like this in with any purchase of the item, but you can have your airline feeding off there. It's gonna create your airlift, connect it into a hang-on breeder box, which is another item that can be purchased. And it's got an elbow that screws in, so there's no hot gluing or anything dangerous. You don't need any equipment at all to uh, basically put something like this together. And once I had a design that I was happy with and that I was yeah, really pleased that it would be something that I could assemble myself and not really rely on anybody to have any DIY skills or anything like that whatsoever, I definitely sought out to test it. So I, I uh, put to work printing out a whole bunch of different ones. I printed some in uh, different, uh, different colors like this gray one. I printed browns, translucent greens, and of course black as well. Uh, I also printed different size ones, like this one is obviously the older version, but I printed smaller square ones. And uh, if the results say anything, the fact is, is that the reason I don't have a demonstration uh, smaller one is because they're all currently in use. I found that the smaller one, I think because the way that the smaller one works is that it has a steeper uh, bunch of angles inside. You can see I've put an angled profile here so that all the eggs roll down to where the uplift is. And because of the smaller version, these are definitely a lot a lot steeper uh, than they are on the longer rectangle one. Also, I think with the smaller square one, there's probably more pull through because uh, the air, the water being drawn through and up is gonna be dispersed over a larger area with the large one. So it probably has a bit more suction when the eggs are going up into the breeder box. So uh, yeah, from my testing, I found that this one here, whilst it was definitely, uh, in theory, gonna be a lot better for production, the smaller ones actually provide far more eggs in my experience. So yeah, from that, that's actually a beneficial thing as well because it means a quicker print and easier to ship. So after all of that storytelling, yes, I've come up with, I think, version five or six of my new egg breeding device and uh, I'll definitely have it available from now for anyone that wishes to purchase one. Over here you can see my printer station where I have a couple of 3D printers and my different filaments. So I'll be able to do it in a variety of colors, whatever you choose. In my testing, I didn't really find too much difference between the colors. Oh, there is a translucent green color as well, which I quite like, but um, on the Etsy page that I'll link down below and in the comments, I'll have all the different colors available there and things might change as um, you know, things go out of stock or um, I bring on different colors or whatever. But um, yeah, I print all of, all of them here in the fish room and uh, I'll print on demand as well. So you can have your pick of color or if you have any fine tuning that you'd like done, I can probably be pretty flexible with that because as I mentioned, all the designs are mine as well. The only other recommendation I'd say when setting something like this up is to have two pieces of sponge here to act as baffles so that the water coming in has a chance to slow down and it creates a bit more of a calmer area down here that I help that I find uh, really helps with fry survival rate because before when I didn't have these, I'd find that they'd sort of be wasting away skinny and sort of be spending their first, their, all their energy trying to swim against the current and you know stay outside of the flow. So uh, I find that especially newborn ones seem to hang around here and as they get bigger and stronger, they venture out here a bit more. So um, two quick baffles can really help your survival rate as well if you are going ahead with something like this. And having moss in here isn't strictly necessary. I just had some spare, so I put it there instead of throwing it out. Now in the past, I've said that if you are overseas, I'd be happy to send you the STL or the design file for my breeding contraptions. But I think at this point in time, I've spent so many hours and hours testing, months and months, and probably even more than a year at this point, refining things to the point that I think that there's a, it's a really, really high quality uh, design 
and the way that it's put together. You know, I'm just a bit worried about it being sort of ripped off or somebody else stealing it and, and running with that idea. So uh, definitely respect everyone that I have overseas. So I will offer them internationally shipped. Uh, I'll have to work out the shipping price. I don't know them off the top of my head, but uh, if you are interested, I will print them and ship them internationally. Just be aware that there might be some uh, interesting timelines on them getting to you and um, I'll probably have to get quotes for the prices to let you know upfront and ahead of time. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy to work with that. But at this point, I'm not gonna share the STL files just because I'm worried about all of my hard work being kind of stolen and uploaded to the internet really. So there you go guys. Uh, hopefully you're as excited as I am. That's what I've really had my head down on the grindstone about over the last couple of months. And that's why I've pretty much been uh, AWOL for the last little while, as well as moving house and all those sorts of things. But I'm um, really, really excited and I'm happy with where it's at now. I uh, can definitely speak for the results. I've successfully bred Chopra Daniels, Emerald Rasboros, CPDs, uh, a bunch of other fish as well with these. And it'll work with any uh, non-adhesive egg scattering fish. So, so that basically means most Daniels, some Tetras and some Rasboros. Just be mindful that some Tetras and Rasboros do like to lay adhesive eggs underneath uh, the plant matter and so forth. So uh, check beforehand uh, your particular species and make sure that they're non-adhesive egg scattering fish. But um, other than that, uh, with access to a hang on breeder box and some air, you can uh, be harvesting lots and lots of fish if you do want to take the method and come up with your own DIY uh, idea as well, I, I certainly encourage that. For me, uh, as long as we have uh, breeding heaps and heaps of these awesome fish to spread around the hobby and make them even more cheap, then uh, that's certainly something that's a winner in my books. By no means am I trying to gatekeep the successful method to uh, breeding these fish or claiming that I'm the only person in the world to do something like this. It's really just trying to get value back for the hours and hours that I've spent on refining the design. Uh, yeah, hopefully you like the video, hopefully you like the idea, and if you do progress through with um, picking up one of my kits, then uh, you know, I, I'd really appreciate that, it'd go a long way to supporting my hobby, supporting the channel, and making sure that I can keep content coming for all of you guys, so um, yeah, if you do like the video, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe, and all that fun stuff, and other than that, I'll catch you on the next one, thanks for watching.